So I, uh, my friend, one of my my BFFs, uh, she needed her locks replaced, and so I got a call to go out to Walmart and pick up some new doorknobs. And after there was literally no one in the garden center, and also no one in the Walmart that I went to knew what a hide key was. Legitimately. <laughs> I talked to like three different people and they're all like, you mean that box that like magnetizes underneath your car? And I was like, no, it's like a hollow rock. That you, it's a hide a key. I mean, I can't, it's in the name, hide a, a key. Anyway. So That's I mean, like I'm a like, car brand. Right? And so I'm like, I'm like hiding or, or jumping over the, the counter and be like, you know, can I get a Walmart associate to the to the garden center, 20 minutes later, a, a manager to the garden center, 15 minutes later, any employee to the garden center, or no, excuse me, anyone who receives a Walmart paycheck, can you please come to the garden <laughs> center? And nobody came. And so I was so annoyed that I just started, you know, as I walked by through like, you know, the, the actual gardening area, you know, the outdoor-ish area, Every time I walk, walk by, like, a display, it just kind of fell after I... It fell? <laughs> just randomly. Wow. Thunk. Thunk. Everywhere. And, like, I have no idea what happened. It was mysterious. So. Okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> welcome <laughs> to... Morticia's Micronational Minutes. I am the producer, Paul Gordon, and we are here with the, the hostess with the most. Can I say hostess with the most? Is, that's, not, that's not copyrighted, is it? I, I don't think so, but it's okay. a little cliche. Nobody pay Donald Trump. Cliche. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't hear that. What was that? This is, this is, our, this is our guest this week. This is Portia. Uh, Portia, is it Leanne? Leanne? Leanne. Leanne. Portia Leanne. The press secretary of Borska. 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 I mean, that's the name. I like it. Borska. Yes, I like it. You guys probably have a good football team, don't you? Borska. <laughs> I don't know. They, they, have, they have a better, like, bear dancing team, I think. Oh, like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. They wear little yeah. clown outfits and have, like, yeah, 20 hats. Nice. Shut nice. it down. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to hand the show over to the Grand Duchess Mott. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ruritania, welcome to the inaugural episode of Morticia's Micronational Minutes. Yes, well, thank you. I mean, I am the Grand Duchess Lydia Sophia Tatiana Morticia von Elfberg. I am also Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Kingdom of Ruritania and Miss Microworld, and now host of this. Um, and I have with me today the most beautiful, well, not most beautiful, because... Miss Micro World, but <laughs> but Portia, like we uh, we met at Microcon and had so much fun. Even though you didn't join me on the night out during the, uh, I wanted to believe me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it was a very hectic conference, you know, especially with uh, all the coverage and everything, and. Um, and how like micro nations right now are kind of like all the rage. Um, it's really kind of exciting in the community, don't you think so? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, of course. Um, but I've noticed uh, like a lot of the comments, which some of them are like hilarious uh, regarding you know the, what HBO and and, and Vice uh, did their our little story, which you were on. You know, I blinked. You blinked. I mean, you didn't have a speaking role. But, <laughs> but um, so, like, I, I feel personally that, like, people don't really know what micronations are because they didn't really, like, they didn't show enough of, like, how we're made and, like, what, what we actually uh, try to do and stuff. And so I think that would be good. You know, like if we we kind of like explained that to people, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so before we talk, we delve into all that is for the Commonwealth of Boschka, um, which is awesome and amazing because they have such a lovely press secretary. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but 
yeah, you know, micronations are like, as we know, like self-sovereign nations. And um, typically, I think that the most famous ones that everyone knows about is uh, is Sealand and Malaysia and Mauritania. Well, you'd hope they'd know about Mauritania. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, but, uh, Liberland, like, I know that's a dirty word, (laughs) like, but, um, did you know that after the Microcon, they launched their own beer brand, like, within 16 hours? Sealand? Not Sealand, Liberland. Uh, Huh. Yeah. They launched a beer. Riding on our coattails. Really curious if it's any good, though. I'm not going to try it because I'm not a trader, but I'm going to think about it. We can't do that. (laughs) (laughs) They're they're too shady of of people. But um, so a lot of people I know are always kind of curious, like, how do you... How do you have land? Like you don't ha- you don't own land because like let's say it's your house because like as my mother, my beautiful and gorgeous mother is like seen in, in on the news as she was talking about how it could be the size of postage stamp. We all love Carolyn, right? Of, of oh yeah, uh, the ambulatory states of Obsidia, and uh, all of their <laughs> all of their wonderful things they have to say about her country and in the suitcase and if they knew the story behind it and it's such a shame like it, it's really kind of heartbreaking that they didn't you know get a chance to to talk about it and I, I don't know. I don't want to butcher the story but it's it's actually really beautiful and I'm sure people can go to her website for the ambulatory states of Obsidia and find that have but a <laughs> you have a pamphlet yeah I have a pamphlet <laughs> well I mean I follow her on like all the things but you know um <laughs> the uh a lot of a lot of people think that we're secessionists, you know, because I mean they think that we're all Americans, which we're not. You're Boshkin, I'm a Rotanian. I'm I'm cool with secession, by the way. Well, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> because my, my lovely and handsomely awkward <laughs> Just um, just handsome. Just handsome will do. Just handsome. <laughs> just thank handsome. You, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, producer and lackey he's uh wow. he's an anarchist and lackey, yes. and lackey. <laughs> but uh so yeah he's he's all about this show because he's like oh well we have this opportunity to talk about micronations rising up and our numbers are growing at this very moment there's a huge- oh i know um my <laughs> uh my sister's actually found out that uh we like we have that island off the coast of uh i think it's new zealand I can never remember if it's New Zealand or the Philippines, because uh, my um, she, my <laughs> sister is just know? like messing around on Google, and then she calls me and she's like, "Is this a joke? Like, how did how did Michael get into my phone? Because like she couldn't wrap her head around the fact that we actually owned like that island that he had actually been in Google Maps and claimed it. He, and, uh, he how did he claim the island? And that whole like that whole mentality of if they don't say no. You know, like, oh, like Flandrensis did, you know, yeah. but my sister was like, no, I want my own island. So I don't know if she's going to make a micronation or not, but she's considering it. Well, I mean, there's there are uh, some patches of land that are unclaimed, you know, they're terra nullises. And I, I mean, I, what I thought was there's only like five or six territories on the world. Well, not territories because they're not owned, but um, that could be claimed, but they're not allowed to be. And, and plus, you'd have to get there. You know, just plant your flag and stuff, but um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there there are places in the world that you can secede. I know that uh, the Kingdom of Shiloh, they um, uh, King Timothy, he's got um, about a like a square foot. I think I think he actually has like a kind of a postage stamp little uh, piece of I want to say Scotland. I think, but he had to write a letter to the Queen of England and say that I want this uh, to secede. If you disagree with me, then write me back. Otherwise, I'm free. Too bad. She never did. So uh, <laughs> it got lost in the mail. And so, <laughs> but I would also yeah, know lost that. in the mail. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then 
you know, of, of course, what Niels did, where he wrote, you know, letters out to everybody uh, for Flandrensis, and um, which I think is hilarious. He's such a he's a delight. Like he's just so funny. <laughs> um, but uh, one of my favorite lines in uh, um, Doctor Horrible, and I think it always applies to micronationalism, is that you know. You know, we all disagree and argue over certain things, um, you know, politi which political ideology is the best, you know, squirrels versus no squirrels, all those kinds of things. But um, hey, hey, I just want to let you guys know real quick. Uh, Kayla DeCant has said that the whole band is watching from my phone. The whole band? The whole band is watching <laughs> from my phone. That's the <laughs> I have a, a one of my favorite local bands here, uh, you know, and local to the state of the United States that uh, Ruritania has our embassy, um, is Dark Bloom. And you can find them on Facebook as uh, Ladies of Dark Bloom or just Dark Bloom. And they are, the lead singer is the lovely and gorgeous Kayla DeCant. And, um, yes, and she uh, is actually going to be... Uh, she and her her fellow musicians are going to be writing us an intro outro. Yes, for, for nice. the show. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, their one of their uh, their bassist is, has agreed to do a cover of Green Jello. Well, Green Jellies, uh, Three Little Pigs for me. So that's uh, you remember that song? <laughs> no. I, are you talking about just like I've never heard of that? I thought the Three Little Pigs was just a book. Oh no! In the '90s, there was a band that that did a song, and uh, it's great. I'll send it to you later. All right. But, but so the quote of, the, of that movie is, you know, the the status is not quo, and so like we all agreed that there's something wrong with the system, and we're going to do a better job, and so we can do that. And you know, yeah, we do have citizens, and sometimes some countries don't have land, and we're we have like cyber citizens and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes, uh, like in the case of Molossia, the only citizens are blood related with the exception of uh, the Millers, um, you know, his, his commander of his Navy. You remember them, the Admiral. Yeah. <laughs> and- um, Vaguely, the whole um, weekend was just a complete blur, so. <clears throat> it, was, it was busy, you know. I'm sure that you saw the, the comments about, uh, you know, our wild, Adult gatherings at night that you know, I have so I have minions watching crazy so. <laughs> crazy late nights playing Monopoly and that's yeah crazy stuff. playing Monopoly together and Mario Kart that's what it was <laughs> they're just jealous because you know they happen to see they were like, invited they were invited and you know I, you know if I saw the princely couple from Eggmore's I'd be like yeah when what time what time is that. Sh those shenanigans happening. <laughs> but, but. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, <laughs> right. So, um, are you ready to talk about Boschka? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. So, okay. Well, uh, first off, you have a lovely, lovely flag and everything, and I'm sure that's probably being displayed. Well, it's absolutely behind you. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so um, you uh, had the most, and I have to say it was completely noticeable, you had the most ostentatiously color-coordinated outfit that you could... I, I don't know how you dyed your hair so quickly. Like, you just... Snap your fingers and it got together. Yeah. Yep, the, the the penguins do it for me. The penguins. The penguins. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes, I I I approve of that. You know, yeah, you're like the Snow White of, <laughs> of right? <laughs> My little yeah. little fingers to go and do your chores. That's perfect. Um, I should start doing that. <laughs> um, now what? Uh, now I know that you have a president, the very handsome. President Michael Bannister, correct? Yeah, he's he's charming. Boy, what's his deal? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is he taken? Yes, yes, he is. Oh, oh, Not he by taken? me, but 
He's taken. He's taken. Okay. Well, just making sure. You know, I am the most eligible bachelorette in my nationals as the Helen of Troy of my <laughs> I have started many a war, you know. <laughs> so, um, now you have, uh, how, how do you fall into our amazing elitist like, I guess, subculture, or some people might want to say lifestyle. Like, how, how do I fall personally, or how I, does no, Boshka? Boshka, like, how, well, did, how did, and you, I want to know how you got involved with Boshka, too. Yeah. But. Um, Michael, back, it's been about 10 years now, I think. I think we recently celebrated our 10th year anniversary. Um, he created uh, Boschka because he wasn't satisfied with how a lot of things in you know, the United States was going. And also just, it was something for fun, too, and kind of something to make a statement, you know. Okay. And then with me, I got on board when he decided to open up to me about it. be like, hey, I have this thing called Boschka, you know. And I was like, this is pretty, this is pretty neat. I, I want to be a part of this. So that's, that's how that happened. Isn't it great where... You realize that you were destined for greatness. Oh, I know. Because I was, I'm one of the oldest, uh, and it's one of the few times that I'll, you know, even admit to being a little bit older. But I'm one of the oldest that's actually born into micronationalism. And uh, it's definitely a different view uh, versus the, like, you know, other founders um, for, for their countries. Um, so I get, you know, I was actually raised by a real dictator, you know. <laughs> so, like, I mean, she's not a dictator. She's a queen. But it's the same, primary, pri you know, same same kind of category. And and you have such like a, a what, what is it like for you to have such an active and public facing role and in, in the community uh, it, within our microsphere? Okay, wait. <laughs> Repeat that question. It kind of went over my head. <laughs> okay. So you are the press secretary, right? Yes. So what is what is it like for you to have such a, a public-facing role within our microsphere? It's... I don't know. I, I don't interact much. I just hit the table. I don't interact very much in the, uh, the micronation community. I mean, there's like you and a handful of other people. But Michael takes care of the majority of things. And, like, if we ever go on a trip, you know, I go with him. I help him proofread stuff whenever he posts something that's, you know, newsworthy or, like, an article or, you know, a status. I help him, like, maybe you should use this word instead of this word again and again. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the... um. So the face as, as opposed to to trying to, to be like me as a, as minister of foreign affairs i have to do a lot plus you know i'm a socialite so i have to like yeah i have to be at public places all the time and and stuff like that and, um so okay well that's that's cool <laughs> um now, <laughs> now so, so tell me about boshka and uh why why did he opt to be a president as opposed to a king because Presidents can get elected out, or is he president for life, or? I'm not really sure why he chose uh, a traditional democracy over a monarchy, but um, he could, by technicality, get elected out, but someone would have to run against him, so. so and, uh, and also, <laughs> he, he can serve, like, an infinite number of terms, but he can only serve, I think, like, I forget the exact number, it's like, it's between two and five. He can only serve between two and five consecutive terms, and then someone else has to step in. But if no one runs against him... And how long is the term? I think... Oh, goodness. I think, like, two or three years. And you said he's, he's he found the country ten years ago? Yeah. So he should... The the lock up on on uh, his terms is, is coming up, is it, is it not? Well... That is if no one runs against him. If no one uh, runs against him. So no I'm, like running, him. I'm running! <laughs> I'm running! Oh, no. I'm running! And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a football team. A football team. I'm kidding. Are, oh, no? No? No, you, no I'm not okay. going to run. Maybe the, I will. The, I don't know. 
You know what? I have to consult with my political consultants. The the Poshka Brawlers is going to be the yes. yeah. <laughs> now, um, now, y'all have to me, and there are many different types of friendly nations, and many right wing nations, and many left wing and centrists and. Ni- nihilists and anarchist nations, you know, like I said, uh, Obsidia, which we mentioned earlier, is an anti-state, which apparently is also funny to other people who don't get what anarchy is. Um, But uh, y'all are, uh, to me, one of the most progressive, you know, Um, and I applaud it. Ruritania is very progressive as well. I mean, of course, we follow lots of rules of etiquette and believe in and being polite and, and courteous to others. But we also feel that what people do behind closed doors in their bedrooms, that's that's their business, you know? It's pretty much our same policy yeah. as well. Right, exactly. So um, now uh, y'all have like the, the LGBTQ plus hyphen hashtag Excelsior triple flabulous plaid snowflake, <laughs> snowflake uh like, I don't know what all the titles are anymore. It, it changes like every week. I just usually go with LGBT plus. Take out there. Everyone's okay. out. Everyone's in that plus. Everyone who's not already in the LGB and the T, they're in the plus. They're in the plus. Okay. <laughs> so, um, which is awesome, you know. Uh, now, y'all ha- also are going to be legalizing, uh, or you know, within Boshka, uh, most of the vices, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you want to talk oh, about Oh, do you that? want me to explain that? Well, yes. <laughs> the way we look at it is <clears throat> if someone wants to, you know, as long as it's not hurting them physically, then there's there really shouldn't be any issue with it. That and or others, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, if people want to, like, per se, go and pay for favors from other people talking prostitution you can say it okay, it's I, just, I, just, I, just, I don't, the don't think this audience is gonna faint I have, I have older minions and they're, oh. it's okay. Uh, okay and i have many friends who are exotic dancers it's okay so the way i look at it is is if people want to go and get a hooker they're going to and that the rational way of making sure people are safe, not just just our citizens, but also sex workers, is that, you know, we make sure we try to limit the, the transmission of STIs. We try to make sure that there's no, like, human sex trafficking going on, sex trade, stuff like that, you know. Unions, right? Huh? Un- unionizing them like they do in Las Vegas. Pretty much. We're unionizing right? them. The prostitutes, yes. Well, I'm, uh, if if I had a political ideology, but since I am a monarchist and I and I do not, uh, I would be more of the libertarian stance as well. Um, you know, did you say libertarian? Libertarian. Li- like, I'm looking it up right now. I don't know what libertarian Li- is, but I'm looking it up. I might want to be a libertarian when I grow up. Maybe. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I too, I think that, you know, people should live the way that they want. People should be able to do what they want. And, and honestly, if they could go and buy, you know, their illegal substances at the gas station or whatever, just like cigarettes, it could be taxed, it could be regulated, you know, crackheads die. It's like, it's a, it's a win-win, right? Well, we don't have like crack or heroin or methamphetamines like legalized, like... oh. Okay. The penalties are a lot less harsh than they are in co- other countries. They're just and we don't <laughs> we don't send people to prison for it. They go to like a drug rehabilitation oh, nice. program and stuff like that. It's not just like, oh, you're a bad person objectively because you did drugs. We understand that people do drugs because, you know, there's some kind of internal conflict. It isn't just like I'm just I just felt like ruining my life for no reason. Just and and as far as pro- prostitution, I mean, it's the world's oldest profession, right? So, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't personally condone prostitution, but I mean, I, I understand there could be a need for it, I guess. And someone is going to make a terrible, 
terrible quote of me saying that. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I'm going to loop that. <laughs> yeah, you're going to make that into a gif. Ten hour loop on YouTube. I don't it's necessarily up. condone that, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, but absolutely, you know, and and plus Darwinism, right? It's going. I if bad things happen, it just kind of leaves. Oh, you mean like oh. Darwin Awards? You mean Darwin yeah, Awards? like Darwin yeah. Awards. You know, you in the let, herd. Let in them the do herd. the stupid things they do. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> likes shorter lines, so I don't. I don't need to wait. So, <laughs> well, I like that shorter lineism. I like this. This, yes. this could be a whole movement. This could be. I I might write the manifesto. Shorter lineism. You're gonna write shorter lineism. Yes, it's hard to go to Universal waiting two hours for the roller coaster. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. Why wait two hours for the roller coaster when you could let people kill themselves off with their own obviously, stupidity? Yeah. Obviously, I have zero plans on ever. Like waiting because of what happened in that one Walmart because <laughs> oh I, I behaved like a toddler, but um, yes. allegedly, allegedly, right? They'd have to have an employee back there to actually prove that's all anything. Alleged. This is all for purely entertainment purposes only, anyway, Correct. folks. This is all Correct. parody. Don't None of this is real. Impersonated you and knocked over all those plants, like yeah, exactly. Wild to me. Why would someone yeah. do that? I have no idea how that one palm tree fell over in the bucket of dirt. No, oh no. my gosh, bucket of dirt! That sounds like a great name for a band. It does. That's going to but say. It's, it's right. not as good as the name of the band for Dark Bloom. That's for sure. No, no, but, not as good as that. No. And it's actually their their lead uh, singer or the the other lead singer and guitarist. Uh, that's actually his last name is Dark Bloom. I that's thought you were pretty cool. Say, say bucket of dirt for a minute, I'll be like, wow, that's a <laughs> that would be, oh, that, yeah, that would be so oh, that would be baller. I but no, totally want to party with that person. <laughs> yeah, bucket of dirt. <laughs> Yo, man, um, I'm hanging out with bucket of dirt tonight. I you know it's gonna be good. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing that that theme song they're writing for me is gonna be titled Bucket of Dirt. Now. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> um, so let's talk about Microcon, right? And uh, and now that we are in the wake. Of it, um, initially when I had asked you to be on, uh, when I was approached to to do this amazing show, um, our opportunity, um, we had just done it, and we we actually we got to see the presentations, right? You know, so we got to see uh, President Bannister and his uh, now famous quote, you know, money, what is it anyway? <laughs> I'm glad that that's. That's all that people are, are are like taking away. It would have been nice had they, you know, kind of said, "Hey, go on our site. You can watch the whole presentations." But then they'd see me sniping at Juliana the whole time, oh. going, "We can't get the this computer to work yet. <laughs> like you're to break my scrolls." But I rocked it anyway. So, yeah, you did. You did I a did. great job. I did. I really want to see that. I still haven't seen I, it, and I want to see the squirrel presentation. I should have. I should have actually just sent you the link to the thing. I could have done it for everybody here. You, you should have showed me the slides. Well, oh, no, you did show me the slides, but I never got to see the. Well, the I mean, you have slides. We can go through it if you if you'd like. Not, you not now. No. Not now. <laughs> no. Now. Maybe. If maybe. We, you know, if we were doing this show at the time, we could have actually done a live stream of the event, but. Well, maybe you should have come to to Atlanta where we I were. I couldn't. I was attending an anarchist uh, event at the time. I was actually speaking at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. It's in Michigan, and uh, I I gave a speech on power, on the nature. Sounds of like a bunch of hippies. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, there there there's a mix of folks. I'm not a hippie, and I was there. I'm definitely not a hippie. I'm a square. I'm a nerd. You're a square. I embrace right. my nerdalness, though. Totally. Okay. Yeah, we can we can see. You can you can picture it. You got <laughs> yeah, it. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, a nerd I, look. You gotta go with am it. Am I wrong? No, not at all. Not at all. Right. <laughs> so um now uh the there's the the work that's done from my from the microsphere that like spreads out into the macrosphere. That was what you and I had like a talk about. So what do you, what what would you care to because I'm a, I'm a chatty Kathy, so I'll talk all day. <laughs> so, like. 
What was the question again? What did you feel about like during the presentations and, and when we saw how much progress other mi micro nations, or micro people in the microsphere <laughs> were putting out into the macrosphere? You know, to the normies, since we're all autistic and stuff. Oh, you know? my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, a lot of it was really inspiring, and I was really impressed. Like, I didn't realize that, you know, a lot of the people were using their micronations, like, do charitable work and, you know, impactful stuff. And I would like to, at some point in Boschka's future, the only issue is, you know, that requires money and time and don't have you know, a lot that's, they things. don't and i love that that you met, brought that up because uh i i've seen that people have called us entitled uh and that they think because you know my mother's like oh well this is it helps fill my time they think that you know she's just got unlimited fun this is we we're doing all of this out of our own pockets you know i mean we're on budget it's not cheap it is not cheap yeah <laughs> I, when I saw uh, William uh, Sergal, who is the, uh, 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 I can't recall what his title is right now, from, from the state of Sandus, because uh, he has an amazing uh, Greek or Latin um, title, but, and I don't speak foreign languages, but German. I relate, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he, he I, I bought him a little cocktail because uh, he was like, oh, you're helping out a college student. I mean, like well, a lot of us are educated, you know, college students. Some of us are, psych, you know, board licensed certified uh, psychiatrists, like you know, Eric Liss and uh, and uh, Yan Peg. Like uh, we we have some jobs. <laughs> like, I work at a dog kennel. I mean, which is so, ironic because I look like one. That's that's your charitable work. You're helping. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not, it's not like a pound or like, it's a boarding facility, I guess. You're helping puppies while they're, while their guardians are out on vacation. You're, you were showing them love. That, that's a charitable work, woman. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> my, my only question is, does dog taste like bacon? If not, dog is safe. We don't just... eat the dog. Oh, oh, we do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I was having another point. conversation. I wondered, are, what, what, what's going on here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ruritania does not condone eating of house pets either. You, you know. probably condone eating squirrel, though, don't you? Oh, actually, I do. And I was going to talk about that later in the news. But okay. uh, Charlie Topia, they are, uh, they just released their agriculture report and uh, for importing and exporting of goods from Charles, Charlie Topia, and one of their exports, which of course I'll talk about the other ones later, um, is squirrel meat. And I said, send me the squirrel meat! I shall have a stew made! So why would you eat them? I thought you hated them. No, they don't need... I. Squirrels are... are they have been banned from Ruritania since the 60s. I think she secretly <laughs> likes squirrels and she wants to be a part of her forever. I do I not. Think, I, I, I think you're onto something there. I do not. I do not approve of them. And you're like you're like the little girls or like the little boys on um on like elementary school playgrounds who like yank people's pigtails when they like them. That's you. No, I'm more of the I'm gonna snap the peck you from. Kind of <laughs> but wow. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, in in the principality of Egmore, you saw the the recent letter that came out of the BPAM. No one, no you one didn't see the, seen the that. newsletter. Lots of people saw it. They have eight thousand citizens with that live within their their city wall, um, in Egmore. But yes, yeah, so lots of people saw the news. But a a squirrel jumped out and jumped upon my my BFF princess sister, Princess Olivia, while she was oh, out no. walking thirsty. Uh, you know the royal puppy, and um, yeah. But luckily, luckily, everything is okay because she, had, by, by the grace of God, had a, a bottle of rosé in her purse. Um, and she beat that squirrel down. Oh, my God. Yes. And, like, the, their local police, uh, because they were, they were already informed about our squirrel watch, because I don't know if you've known, noticed this, but there have been, like, an increased amount, like, a, a, a shockingly high number of like vicious squirrels attacking 
everywhere since my presentation because I brought it to, I think it's because they, they know, they heard that I'm trying to get us to unite. They heard. They heard. Nice. Fast. Squirrels ain't yeah. even worried. Squirrels ain't even worried. Ain't, ain't no <laughs> thing. Ain't no thing. So, um, but back to the charitable works that we got to hear about. So like, um, uh, the King Emmanuel of uh, Amethonia, excuse me, um, wasn't he just like enlightening? Like, was it? I, I thought that he was just uh, just a delight to listen to. And and his projects right now um, are just so beautiful to me. I mean, do you, do you want to mention it? Just going to let me talk. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about. That's why I'm I, listening. Oh, oh. Uh, the King, King Emmanuel is the one who uh, he sends the, the letters of recognition to people who do like uh, good Samaritan work. Oh, yeah. You told me about this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, these are people that most people go, oh, they've just read it in the news and then it's just done, you know, and and I guess maybe it's kind of one of those key to the city kind of things. that's just, for you know, that, you know, a mayor would do just for shut. That's not what he's doing. He's actually recognizing them and letting them know. You know that they have made a difference in the world, and uh, because they they either saved that life or or whatever, and it and you know it's it's uh it's to me that's just so amazing, and I and I hope eventually I can have them on at some point. <laughs> but it's the number of people that want to you know come on in the show and try to try and talk is a lot. Um, which would who whose presentation besides mine and. Uh, <laughs> President Bannister's Vanity. Uh, thy name is Mort. Anyway, go ahead. It is. Whose <laughs> um, presentation uh, kind of struck you the most? I really like the um, the girls from Obsidia's uh, Carolyn's uh, presentation. Oh yeah, because yeah. it was just it really it stuck out a lot, and I am a, just a big fan of like just nice, interesting concepts like that, and like you know their whole thing is like. You know, they, they have that thing where they're, they really like fashion and things that are considered like, what was the word she used? Like superfluous or superfluous or something like that. Superfluous. Yeah. Superfluous. 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 Yes. There we go. And I just, I really, really like that concept. Now, don't get me wrong. Everyone's presentations were amazing, but that one, that one really stuck out to me specifically. Well, uh, uh, you know, she makes all of those, uh, uh, she, she does that herself. You oh, know? and as she told me. Oh yeah, I've seen her. I've seen her posts on on the Instagram. What, what is it that you're talking about? Because some of our studio audience might not know what you're talking about. Oh, the ambulatory states of Obsidia, um, the Grand uh, Field Marshal or Grand Marshal. She's just Grand Marshal of uh, Carol Carolyn. Um, she is the lovely, lovely uh, and beautiful Carolyn. You can see her in that Vice News show, or I don't know if you pulled her up on on the thing, but. Uh, she's the one who's wearing teal and and the, and the bright pink, and she has the the rock in the suitcase, and she's like, she's you, can touch, sparkly you, can, too. "You can touch my country if you want." Oh, that's like, awesome! Yes, I know. Yes, that. yes, I love yes. that. Yeah, that was and great. She's she's actually doing a, a project, uh, and I and I uh, during the gala, I, I pulled her aside and I said, "You know, I'd love to help." With with this in any way that I can, and and one of those things is once I can get through a list of people, uh, I would love to have her on because of, of her project to give women who were um, victims of you know rape or, or other assaults a voice when they feel like they don't have a voice. And um, I know that she's doing a lot of art projects, kind of like help. She's uh, I guess not performance art, but something along those Similar. lines. It's yeah, it's. Uh, so, but she's she's a very colorful and and artistic person, and it, and it's such a great project. I, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, it was it was a delight to hear about her and why that rock <laughs> is her country and why she can carry it around everywhere. Um, but yeah, I don't well, want to. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't I don't know the story of of why with the rock, but I'll say that well, uh, what I love about the rock, and I remembered that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so she has this rock. That's her country. And it's like a, a sign that says, touch my country, which is yeah. awesome. And it also has all kinds of, stuff, <laughs> of plays on words there that are rather interesting. But, oh, uh, yeah. But <laughs> There's still, one, what, one particular.
particular comment look, on look, YouTube was like, go ahead, right, go right, ahead. Right. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna go, not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. But uh, what I really love about it for me, from my perspective, is uh, it is just as absurd that she has declared a country of this rock and she has declared magical. Uh, state powers over this rock, which she gets to carry with her, which is awesome, as it is that any state would declare magical mystery state powers over any other geographical reason. So for me, it's very poetic. It's I love it. Okay, I'm just gonna tell. You, I'm gonna say what I believe. I remember the 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 reason behind the rock is, and and Portia, please correct me if I'm wrong, but. Um, at the time of the last microcon, which was in 2015 and hosted in Anaheim by uh, the Republic of Malaysia, um, she, I, I don't believe that she had a home. Uh, I'm sure she had friends who she was living with, but not a place of her own. And yeah. one, of, one of her friends gave her that rock and told her that everywhere she goes, she has her place. And, uh, and that is the, the, ambulatory states of obsidia and it goes with her everywhere and it's such That's a so beautiful i know it's That's such beautiful. a beautiful a wholesome story i've heard I, like this year i know and i've been like i've been I've, and i don't want to steal her thunder you know because it's so beautiful i mean like those two like sentences literally can almost bring tears to my icy cold black heart and it's to my eyes you know and i'm like no like y'all can talk smack about her, her country being this this rock but it's really such a sweet and beautiful story and and people are just it's the internet it's what it is but um now we have uh we also have like neil uh neil's of uh, flandrensis right um and he got to do a presentation and and i think we actually already touched on him with uh uh briefly well, yeah briefly i mean not on him or the rock because you touched my country but <laughs> but uh yeah he was able to uh um claim those five islands off the coast of antarctica um and i i believe that he's actually gotten some kind of formal if so facto kind of recognition from the un i huh. I, I could be wrong but I believe that they've they've made note of yes, that is his. But I could be confusing that with Westarica, who I know that they were embattled for a very long time. I, uh, I heard about that. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, well, the state of Sanus, which I had brought up earlier, you know, they do the the nice work of of helping people who are in the area of transitioning. Yeah. Uh, uh, to to whom they should be, um, they they help get chest binders for them and 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 I think that's just wonderful. Um uh, and I know that I know that Boshka also helps uh people too, correct? We'd like to. I mean like we we have the concept of it on paper. Like okay. yeah. It's that, it's, in, it's in the early stages. <laughs> yeah. Like if if we did have like an actual thing where we could have healthcare, you know, for people, transgender uh medical transitioning costs would be covered under that including like you know cosmetic surgeries and stuff like that you know i'm not talking about like gender confirmation surgery i mean like you know cheekbones lifted necks lifted you know if people want lipo big old butts you know it's all good to us well i mean i'd i'd like lipo and i'd like to have a big old butt but well you gotta transition so well, i know i i already am the the one that I want to be. I'm, I'm good. Oh, <laughs> but Sorry, then you can't have a big old butt <laughs> unless you pay for it. <laughs> but I thought, <laughs> I, I, I thought that uh, uh, y'all also helped uh, provide clothing for people during transitions? Mm -mm, no. Oh. We were going to. Like, oh, okay. <clears throat> well, there have been a few times where I have, like I have close personal friends where I'd be like, hey, do you want this? Because I know... You recently, you know, came out, and then I doubt you have like, like any, if you know, not a lot, if any, clothes. And if you want, I can go and get you some, or I have some laying around. But I'd like to actually start like an actual clothing drive for transgender people, and that, that will probably ha have to wait until I move because I don't think that would happen or go over very well where, where, where I live now. <laughs> now, um, now y'all, uh, for, for Boshka, y'all created a third gender on your documents. Well, it's a 
It's a third gender option. Like, if someone doesn't identify as, like, a man or a woman, they could just put null. Oh, okay. So, so uh, but, you know, I don't have my cheat sheet for all the, what people call themselves. So, it's, uh, like, what, asex or something like that? Like, uh, Well, a- asexual is where people don't experience sexual attraction. But, uh, like, um, I think you're thinking about agender. But, I mean, there's a okay. lot of different, like, non-binary identities. Non-binary is just a good umbrella term. Some people just identify as that in and of itself. But a non-binary is just a good umbrella term. But there's, like, there's a lot of them. But, you know, just, I, I don't I don't remember all of them either. I, mean, I just I, know, like. I, I certainly don't don't get it. I, I, Ruritania tries to help a, a local charity uh, to Atlanta uh, called the Lost and Found Youth. And, um. Uh, one of one of my uh, one of my BFFs. Uh, she actually uh, she goes in and volunteers with them like every other Saturday, and because uh, I was telling her like I I don't know nowadays like am I how do I know exactly which pronoun to use and she says that you're supposed to just walk up and be like I was like Hi. just ask. I well in Ruritania I I I I'm, I'm gonna have to confirm this with my mother you know but. Um, I, I, it's not something that, you know, Mrs. Manners or Emily Post would have certainly ever asked us to do, <laughs> you know, is to walk up and ask for you a pronoun, but. You can make little, like, like, um. Name tags. Brooches for people to wear. Make them real frilly, too. Ooh, there went my hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so windy over there, right? I know, right? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, now, uh, what is the Ministry of Love? Like, it's actually, uh, I told you this earlier. I'm sorry. Oh. My handwriting is terrible, so don't worry. I, that was handwritten, everyone. Um, the Ministry <laughs> of War. It's kind of similar in concept to, like, the United States' FCC, I guess, and that it uh, it protects, like, the validity of, like, our country's, like, history and stories and, like, you know, folk tales and legends and myth and stuff like that. Basically oh. making sure that no one, like, you know, goes willy nilly and does anything dumb with our history, or yeah, yeah. Lore is uh, lore instead of love. That's awesome. I'm glad that I did that. Um, <laughs> but culture and traditions are a big part of like people who are trying to set up a micronation and like even established ones. They still like come up with new holidays, um, just like how today is the start of the first annual. Squirrel Awareness Week uh, within the Kingdom of Ruritania, and uh, you can laugh all you want. Um, but you know, I, I, as you can tell, because no, we I'm, are, I, I'm laughing because I knew about this already that you were gonna talk about this here. So I'm like, I knew. <laughs> well, uh, you know, as you are a personal friend of mine, um, there are so many people that post to my personal Facebook. And tag me on squirrels all the time. I know. I've seen it. Believe me. <laughs> now, I know that we met, at, you know, at the conference and then, and you, you know, befriended after that. So you didn't really see that it was only like maybe, I don't know, uh, Paul, probably one third, one fifth. Oh, less than that. Maybe one sixth, one seventh of what I've seen on your page. I know. And I, I, and I just want to say for the record that I have a long history of producing squirrel stuff for you. <laughs> well, they're not as good as the stuff that uh, Michael Cessna. Excuse me? Uh, Excuse me? Uh, well, he finds, he finds anti-squirrel oh, no, stuff. I oh Where no, got that, that, guns. That's, that's not good. That's not good. I find pro squirrel stuff. Okay. Well, um, that's better. It's better. He's got that good so, squirrel stuff. Yeah, I got that, that good. I got Them that. dank memes. Yeah. If it that ain't means. dank, man, get it out of here. So the, the kingdom of Slobovia, uh, they actually have a a, a team of mil, of their military, kind of like their SEAL Team Six, uh, that go out and hunt squirrels. And in Ruritania, we have a team of snipers. Uh, my daughter, um, Princess Charlotte Dorothea, she is one of them. I don't know if you got to see the, the squirrel target uh, range. I, I did, actually. I did. You did? Okay. Yeah. 
Perfect. And so, yeah, I mean, that she goes out there and she trains and she helps other other people uh, in in our in our in our many troops uh, to make sure that they can kill these uh, before they step on our soil. Trigger. Because they so, so it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the boy and girl scouts, except for instead of teaching them how to make fire and build tents, you teach them how to kill squirrels. Eradicate. Squirrel. Oh, eradicate. Okay. Yeah, you gotta eradicate. use the word eradicate because it's softer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when people like euthanize animals at the pound, they call it destroy, but I'm like, that yeah, sounds right. so much so worse, worse than right. what you're right. actually yeah. doing. <laughs> we don't we don't just use them, we don't put them to sleep. You know, just, just, and then and then cremate them. We destroy <laughs> them. Just, just to let you know more, we got about ten minutes left. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It's a, it's your first one. You'll get a sense of time. It'll but we were we were having such a great conversation on yeah. on all of the wonderful things. But yeah, so Squirrel Awareness Week. Um, you go to the Kingdom of Britannia's page, and you can find the event, and you can post all the squirrel stuff there for this week instead of my feed. No, <laughs> like, no. no, 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 no. Keep 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 posting on her page, please. Objectively. And, <laughs> um. But, uh, but Portia, because I have to get to new segments, you know, I have to let you go, you know, and so, but is there anything else that you would like the world to know? Oh, goodness me. Um, I'm trying to think, you, you sent me, um, some talking points that we were going to cover. I'm trying to think of something on there that we didn't cover already. Uh, oh, I guess I could, well, you asked me about the significance of aloe vera in culture. I'm going to be quite frank with you. There really isn't one. We all just really like it. Like I, I personally, I like the, I like the way it looks. We have an aloe plant in the other room. We, uh, I love the water. Like you can buy it at like Walmart. It's fantastic. And they have like a hundred percent aloe vera gel. And that's the only skin product I use. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we all just really like it. It's like Coca-Cola to people from Georgia or like, you know, <laughs> I mean like it's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can dig that. I dig it. Um, well, great. It was so nice. It was so nice to have to see you again. It was and, nice to see you again too. Yes. And I can't wait until, uh, I, I have to send you that gift at some point. And, um, but yes, absolutely. And I can't wait to talk to you again. All right. All right. All right toodles. Bye. <laughs> toodles. Bye. Pip, thank you very much, Portia. Uh, Leon, uh, the secretary Leanne. of Leanne. Leanne, you two, both of you for being on the show. Uh, it's great having you on and hopefully you can be on again sometime. Definitely. Right. So okay. I guess probably. Do I press the red button? Probably press the red button. <laughs> I press it. So, you pressed it. Okay. And now let so, now the big the big mystery here. When I go to the two shot, does it does it work? Oh. <laughs> ah, hold on. So it's still it's still it hasn't transitioned yet. We're still uh, we have uh, the the thing on here, and that's okay. That's okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, you go ahead and talk. And oh, I think we got it now. I think we got it. Hold on, hold on. Boom. We got it. Oh okay. uh, yes. Yes. All right. You're a little rosy in this one, but we'll just have to deal with it. It's because I'm happy. So <laughs> we, uh, in the microsphere, we have some important news coming up. Uh, next year is going to be the second uh, micro francophone summit, which kind of was similar to the microcon that was just hosted uh, in Atlanta uh, by my wonderful and beautiful, uh, talented mother. Um, it is organized by the Empire of Anglistan and will take place in Vicennes, uh, which I probably butchered because I don't speak French except for très, très bon. Très bon. Uh, très bon. Uh, in France, um, it is adjacent to the Empire's territori ter territorialized embassy uh, for July 21st and 22nd of next year. Um, and... Uh, it, it is mostly just for French-speaking micronations. Um, there is a huge, vast number of them, and they're all fantastic. Every single one of them. I love all of them. And in pers they personally invited me out 
to that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I hope to be in attendance, actually. Um, one of my other favorite micronations uh, and one of our greatest allies and local to us, their neighboring, uh, is Royal Adan. Um, the King's birthday this year is a super special occasion to uh, His Royal Majesty Richard um, because he is turning 50. Um, and also uh, Prince Alexander is being uh, added to the Royal Order of St. Maurice as a knight uh, dur during this month. And Prince Theodore will be getting his first haircut. And there are talks of them auctioning off his curls. And I totally would like to bid on the curls of a pure blood prince. Absolutely. Wow. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's kind of kitschy and cool. I like it. <laughs> so um, as I was mentioning earlier about Charlie Chalatoria, um, they just they had just released their agricultural report and they have been getting an immense number of squirrels flooding the 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 land there this is good news this is not good news this is good news girls are your friends if if you treat them decently no because their story mind you was very similar to another country uh the kingdom of jupiter's story uh which uh king max's mother the the lovely and delightful uh, Princess uh, or Lady Leah, she has uh, she had informed me that squirrels were coming on their property. This was after my presentation, uh, you know, calling for all of us to unite to help eradicate these vile vermin. Um, that they eat about one out of every six ears of corn uh, on the property, and she sent me a picture. Seems like appropriate tribute. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I, 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 I asked her to send me a photo so you can see that. Um, and so, but the same thing, one out of every six on, in, in Charlotopia is happening as well, but they're also, uh, eating all of the tomatoes and other crops that they're growing there, um, running up onto their terraces and just stealing them right out of the buckets. Um, I mean, yeah. they can't yield. 15% of their crops. Now, people want to, you know, make fun of me for say, saying, you know, why, you know, why does Ruritania hate squirrels so much? And I'm happy to tell anyone, but I can't get into it today. We don't, we're pressed for time, I'm sure, right? Yeah, we're, we, we've got a few minutes left here. Right. So not, not, not a today thing, but you can contact me through the Kingdom of Ruritania or through, through this, and I'm happy to share it. Um, but yeah, it. Not only that, they cause 26% of all blackouts in the United States alone. 26%. That's, I'm sorry. I, no. Well, you know what That's happens rejected. during blackouts, right? Yeah, yeah, babies, I do. Babies are created. Well, they're, they're, so they're not, they're not born, so but they're, they're, good, they're accepted. I, I said created. They're created. So, <laughs> yeah. so there's the, there's the, they're good for the human propagation thing. So, hey, squirrels are good. See, you're making right. the case. It's good. No, I'm not. You're making the case for so, sure. This is awesome. Yeah. All right. You know what? I'm gonna call. The, I'm gonna retitle this episode. Uh, uh, the Grand Duchess makes the case for squirrels. I am not making. No, it's we drag <laughs> me to Boschka. Absolutely. But um, also in the country of Uskar, uh, they are amending several of their witchcraft laws and considering reviving the monarchy. I mean, currently they're a communist state, um, but uh, which I applaud any monarchy, so absolutely, and death to capitalism, except to uh, Zirconia, because I love my uh, Alexi. Um, also, Urania, uh, the national animal, and this is important news, actually. Uh, the national animal is the sheep, and there's an island uh, near where their country is uh, that is being uh, a nonprofit organization is trying to uh, eradicate, actually, for real, all of the wildlife, including all of the sheep on this island, um, which is terrible. So it's this uh, Wisdom Foundation, and uh, people want to help save the sheep and other animals, with the exception of squirrels. Um, they should definitely try and, you know, reach out to this uh, nonprofit because while they're trying to protect the the foliage of that island, of Knox Island, um, 
that's the killing the animals on the island is not necessarily the correct way to go. Kind so of defeats the purpose. Kind of defeats the purpose. Um, because again, Darwinism, like you know, if those plants were meant to live, they would make themselves poisonous so the animals wouldn't eat them. It's very clear in the Amazon. Works there. Should work there. So, just saying. Um, in the Republic of Kirame, um, the President Sigunia, uh, he's been in protective custody since uh, May of 2017. I know, it's shocking too. Um, but uh, he has made great progress and expects to be returning uh, to his native country uh, by September. Um, we also, one of my favorite uh, communities of Micronations is the minister, uh, the, the Missionary Order of the Celtic Cross, which are, or many of us know as the MOCC. Um, they just had a huge festival, uh, actually just began uh, between August 1st to uh, August 9th. Um, and they even uh, just had their chaired bard and poet laureate for 2017 listed. That was Judy Woods Davis. Um, but it's a huge festival, and sadly, I can't talk about all of it. Um, but I should also tell people that they need to go and listen to Dark Bloom, right? Because they have the lovely Kayla DeCant as their lead singer for their industrial uh, rock band. They also do techno. So, yes. So, is that enough? Is that enough? I think is so. Is that enough? You wanna, uh, oh, you wanna wrap her up, man? Let's wrap this up, man. Let's do this. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not really sure how to wrap the show, but I, uh, I, I do uh, applaud everybody who is new to micronationalism, especially uh, even those people who are close to me who. Uh, I have known me for years, always thought I was kidding that I was a grand duchess. Um, and now they're actually like, holy crap, you really are. And <laughs> so they can actually visibly see this um, and and thanks to Vice News. And, and it's just, it's wonderful. Um, we're, we're all very happy uh, in this community. And I want to thank you for watching and take the time. And yeah. toodles. And I'll say for, for the audience <laughs> that I've invited, the which tends to be, man, the anarchist, libertarian, anarchist kind of... Uh, libertarians! Right. <laughs> libertarians as well. That, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, for, for, for the anarchist among us, micronationalists, they're not quite where we would like them to be. But uh, they are, for me at least, they are a significant step in the right direction to demystify the mythology of the state. Because these are folks that... They're just going out for like for for a lot of reasons. Some people have really political agendas. You're not going to agree with, you know, because like we had on Portia, she's progressive, and then you have conservatives. You got Christian conservatives. You got all kinds of folks. Oh, but yeah. the one thing that they all have in common is that they have this notion that individuals can wake up and say to themselves, "You know what? I'm a nation," and I do iState.tv. Uh, which this will also be published on iState TV, and including our, our YouTube channel as well. Uh, and iState means a state of one. I I am I am my own state. So yeah, that's that to me that's an exciting push in the direction. So I could see all kinds of reasons why I would love to see micronationalism become more popular. Whether you're progressive, conservative, libertarian, if you get this idea in your head. That I could wake up and say, dude, I'm a nation. That's awesome. I love that. Oh, and, and you know, we, we have, like, because of what HBO allowed us to do and be visible, uh, we've had a surge in people asking for citizenships. We've had, we've seen uh, a large amounts of countries uh, popping up everywhere. And, and we... Love all you baby nations. I mean, some of us, like, Ruritania has strict policies on, on who we have diplomatic relations with. Um, but uh, once you get established for six months, we'll talk. But, yeah, absolutely. Like, the, spreading the word uh, is so beautiful because right? our message is strong. It's, it's you know, we, we can do it better. We know it. And I'll say, if you if you like this show, uh, be sure that you uh, like, share, comment, <laughs> spread the word. <laughs> Uh, yes. We're going to basically be doing this show for now, uh, once a month for now, and it'll be the first Sunday 
of every month, unless there's some reason where every once in a while we might do it the second Sunday. But mostly we're doing it the first Sunday of every month. So we'll be doing the next show in September. But I'm sure you'll see stuff coming out on the page, maybe some videos and other stuff yeah. between now and, and, and the month. Be sure that you uh, message the page or, or uh, if you're personally connected to the Grand Duchess there, you message her stuff that you'd like to see uh, get on the yes. show. But we will be on so whatever the first Sunday of September is and probably evenings. Uh, what do you, didn't we say that? Well, yeah, we said evenings. Today, uh, today we had to do it in the daytime because I'm going to go see my wife play the bassoon. So. The bassoon. The bassoon. <laughs> the bassoon. The bassoon. Yes. So my, you, got, you got any last words before I shut this this uh, pony stand down? Because the pony stand is a pony stand a thing. Oh, by the way, I've uh, uh, got okay, a couple comments here. I might just uh, uh, just uh, share. Thank you, thank you, everybody who commented. Charlie Dawson yes. said, "I love this. This is yes. my favorite news station." Yes, that makes, <laughs> makes sense. Uh, and uh, Kayla, thank you for uh, also Kayla shared, and I appreciate that. And definitely yes. the Grand Duchess appreciates that. Yes. Uh, although I love what Kayla says here. Uh, I'm staying really open-minded, Kathy, because I've usually liked squirrels. Kayla, stay with Squirtopia, okay? Stay. If I have to start a micronation called Squirtopia. What is she saying? <laughs> she said, I'm staying really open-minded, Kathy, because I've usually liked squirrels. But you're making some good points. No, she's not. We'll, we'll discuss. They attack the children and elderly. Lies. Just, Lies. just recently. The children and, and, and elderly who were attacked deserved it. You know that there was recently, and it was reported by Vice News and not to mention other local news stations across the United States, that in Brooklyn, five people were attacked by a, like, a horribly vicious vermin. I, I, uh, I, I follow Blood the, bloody. Grand, I follow the <laughs> Grand Duchess's orders unquestioningly, except when it comes to squirrels. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> so this, this battle will continue. Do you have any last uh, last things before we, we close shop here? Stay vigilant. And never forget, don't be a victim. That's the squirrels and toodles. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>